And to start with, let's take a look at rootless chord voicings. So for our C minor seven chord, let me show you a rootless voicing for C minor seven. You're going to play the root in your left hand in the bass. You're going to find the chord's third. So what's the third of C minor? It's going to be E flat. And then we're going to play a major seven chord built from E flat. So E flat's major seven. It's going to look like this. This is a really nice chord voicing. It's called a rootless chord voicing, position A. And it's going to give us the minor third, the fifth, the minor seventh, and the ninth. Very nice. So C minor seven would look like this. We could build it for the four chord, F minor seven. Which notes would we play? Find the chords minor third, A flat, and then build a major seven chord from A flat. It's going to look like this. Now we can also invert this chord voicing, and it's common to take the top two notes and to bring them down an octave. So B flat and D can come down here, B flat and D, and E flat and G. And this is also a very common chord voicing. This is a rootless chord voicing position B, which I also use a lot with my chord progressions. So for a minor seven chord, we can either play a rootless voicing position A, third, fifth, seventh, ninth, or a rootless voicing position B, which is going to be seventh, ninth, third, and fifth. Now how about a major seven chord? Let me just demonstrate from C, if we had a C major seven chord, again we could use a rootless chord voicing, and for a major seven chord, we're going to find the chord's third, so a major third this time, it's going to be E, and this time we're going to build a minor seven chord from E. So E minor seven, it's going to look like this. So that is our rootless chord voicing position A, for a C major seven chord. And then how about position B? Can you tell me which notes we're going to play? Just take the top two notes, drop them down an octave, and it will look like this. So it's the same numbers, three, five, seven, nine, or seven, nine, three, five. And you can just apply that to a major seven chord or a minor seven chord. So how would we voice E flat major seven if we wanted to do a rootless chord voicing in position A? find the chord's third, it's going to be a major third. Then which type of seventh chord are we going to build? Well, it's always going to be the opposite of the chord type. So if this is an E flat major seven, we find the major third, and then we build a minor seven chord. So that's how I remember it. If it's a major seven chord, you find the third, and then build a minor seven chord, so it's like the opposite, major minor. Whereas if it's a minor seven chord, you find the minor third, and then you build a major seven chord. So it's kind of like the opposite, whichever chord type it is, you find the third and then you switch the chord type. Now even these new chord voicings can be a way for us to get out of key. For example, if we take these rootless chord voicings, there's certain chords that we've looked at where if you apply these rootless chord voicings, it will actually add a note that's out of key. And I like to do this on the five chord, the G minor seven chord. If you add this rootless chord voicing, you end up with an A natural up here. And really that's taking you out of key be maybe the Dorian scale, which has a major sixth. So just by playing this chord voicing on the five chord, it actually very subtly breaks you out of the key. So sometimes just adding these rootless chord voicings will actually just tweak you out of key just a tiny bit. So next, let me show you how I like to voice dominant seven chords. Let's take a C dominant seven chord to demonstrate. Again, I like to use rootless chord voicings. And for a dominant seven chord, we're going to find the chord's third, which is going to be a major third. So two whole steps brings you to E. Then we're basically going to build a stack of fourths up from E, so E, A, and D. And last of all, we're going to add a half step above the middle note, which is going to give us a B flat. 
So this is actually the voicing that I like to use for dominant seven chords. It's slightly different to the minor seven and the major seven because we just tweak this fifth and move it up. And again, we can play position A, which looks like this, or we can invert it, take the top two notes, bring them down an octave, and play it in position B, which looks like this. Now I know this is getting a bit heavy, but this is how you create these sophisticated chord progressions. The chord voicings are an essential part to these chord progressions. So I like to use these rootless chord voicings, Another thing I sometimes like to do is play a stack of fifths in my left hand. Just sort of beefs up the sound of the chord, especially if I'm rippling it. So C minor seven. Sometimes beef up certain chords with a stack of fifths in the left hand if you can stretch it, or just play a root and fifth if you can't. So now we can take these rootless chord voicings and start applying them to the chords that we've looked at. So we can play an F minor 7, rootless voicing. G flat dominant 7, I'm doing this tritone substitution here. Find my voicing, resolves nicely down a half step to F minor 7, rootless voicing. Do it again, tritone substitution to C minor 7. Now if you'd like to learn more jazz piano chord voicings, I've put together a free download, which is my jazz piano chord voicing guide. You can download that for free at the link below. And that's going to show you all these different types of chord voicing, including shell voicings, rootless chord voicings, fourth voicings, the Kenny Barron voicing, and more. So you can download that for free below. If this is the first video of mine you've seen, make sure you don't miss out on future videos by subscribing to my channel. I hope you enjoyed this series, and I will see you in a new video soon.